Hi, I'm Reverend Tom Kearns. Welcome to 333 Magic 9, where the tarot cards and astrology stars come together to help you by combining the visual messages of the tarot and the energy of astrology, you can be prepared for the opportunities and the challenges that are coming your way this month. I hope you will like this video and also press the little bell for notifications when my new videos come out. The card for the first week of the month is the Strength card. It represents courage and wisdom. The card for the second week of the month is the world. It represents freedom and completion. The card for the third week of the month is the four of pentacles. It represents holding on and fear of loss. The card for the fourth week of the month is the ace of cups. It represents positive new possibilities. Cancer, the tarot card for the first week is the strength card. A woman of great confidence is closing a lion's mouth. Above her head is the infinity symbol. You have the ability to control your animal nature. Don't fear it. Use the subconscious to incorporate it into your personal expression. This is the magic of feminine energy. Use its urges in a positive manner. A powerful woman may help you. Now, as we look down into the astrology, the month begins with Venus square Uranus under the light of a full moon in the sign of Capricorn and the seventh house of your chart. Now, this house deals with partners and relationships, and there is a lot of emotion floating in the air. So be careful not to be too willful, independent, or ego-driven. You might need cooperation. Now, Venus in the second house turns on your physical desires as well as your need for the finer things in life. The square to Uranus in the 11th house warns you not to mix money and friendships. Be sure the people you're dealing with share the same values as you do. And the week will end as the moon will conjunct Saturn in Pisces and your ninth house. Now this is a very sobering energy that will help common sense prevail over emotionalism. So use the power of understanding. The tarot card for the second week is the world card. It shows a woman dancing surrounded by a wreath and the four symbols of the elements of the zodiac. She reminds me of Shiva. One cycle is ending so a new adventure can begin. The rewards of hard work may be coming your way in both material and spiritual terms. This is the final card of the Major Arcana. Now, as we look into the astrology, week two begins as Mercury in the first house will oppose Pluto in the eighth house, warning you to watch what you say in intimate situations. Don't make problems you can't, don't make promises you can't keep in the heat of the moment or you'll make problems. You should also use extra care in investments. Um, it may be a good time to change your long-term strategy. Look things over carefully. Now, Mars will enter Virgo and your third house of intellect, bringing a lot of new ideas, but also a streak of criticism. It's important to take a practical approach to communicating your ideas. It's also wise to watch your nerves and to be patient. And they may be really true because the moon will conjunct Uranus in the 11th house of associates. That might make you need patience because this is an erratic and exciting energy that could bring new opportunities or some new problems into your life. And you need to learn how to network successfully and even with different people. The tarot card for the third week is the Four of Pentacles. This is a card of holding on to what one has earned, but it may also represent a fear of loss. 
Be careful with your resources, but ask this question. Do I own what I have, or do my possessions own me? You may have to be more flexible. Now, as we look down into the astrology, the third week begins as Mercury in Leo squares Jupiter in Taurus, and that's from the second to the eleventh houses. You may have to deal with some difficulty or stubborn people who have different ideas about money and how to use it than you do. Now, if you disagree with their values, it may be time to break away and follow your own path. Now, the sun will trine Neptune, and this goes up into the ninth house, and this may be a time to gain a little bit of extra inspiration and a broader view so you can see new possibilities for success in the future. Be careful for the weekends with a thud as Mars in the third house opposes Saturn and he is in the ninth house and that portends frustrating situations about understandings or misunderstandings. And the sun in the first house opposes Pluto in the seventh house, which suggests a falling out with partners or power struggles. Use your wisdom and patience to move through this challenging time. The tarot card for the last week of the month is the Ace of Cups. Now, this is a powerful card on the level of sensual and emotional experiences. It suggests new possibilities and happiness that are gifts of the ever-flowing waters of life. On a higher level, it suggests you may achieve a deeper level of spiritual understanding and power. Now, as we look into the astrology, the month ends as Mars in the third house begins to separate away from the opposition to Saturn in the ninth. Now, this can ease any tension and strife that was in the air, and especially between your personal ideas and the beliefs of others. So this is a good time to take a break from any pressure that's been on you. Now there still will be excitement in the air as Mercury in the second house will square Uranus in the 11th. Now this could bring new business opportunities through networking. You may have to watch your resources though as money can flow through your fingers. Now lovely Venus will help, you know, clear out any communication glitches as she joins Mercury in the second house. So you may actually hear some good news that can lead to money-making ideas and the possibility of new investments in technology. Hi, I'm Reverend Tom Kearns, and this is my story. If you are a spiritual seeker, it may help you on your journey. I believe your spiritual development is as important as your religion. If you look at Christianity, it focuses on the life of Jesus. But Jesus was never a Christian. He was Jewish. If this thought intrigues you, you'll enjoy my new book, Light from Water, Freeing Jesus. It's available on Amazon.com and through fine bookstores. And it may help you on your spiritual journey. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like this video, subscribe, and ring the little bell to be notified when new videos come out. And if you'd like to arrange a private psychic and spiritual reading with astrology, just go to my website, internetpsychicreadings.com or professorastrology.com.